What's up guys, James here, how are you doing? So I've just watched a video by Watcher Azazzle, uh, he's talking about Germany banning circumcision, which is fantastic news, and I've never seen him so happy in my life. If you aren't subscribed to him already, please do, I'll uh, leave a link down to his channel below. So, after watching that video, I then saw in the related videos box to the right there somewhere, uh, a user called Smart Rant, uh, she did a video about it where she had very much the opposite opinion, and I'd like to cl uh, clear up a few misconceptions she has and deal with uh, some of her arguments. Hey, Bethany Hanna here with our first European-themed Smart Rant. And uh, this is European-themed because yesterday the German court in Cologne ruled that parents may not have their sons circumcised for religious reasons, holding that the fundamental right of the child to bodily integrity outweighs the fundamental rights of his parents. And rightfully so. I mean... I honestly can't understand why this is even a topic which is still being debated in the 21st century. Now, while admittedly unfamiliar with the particulars of German law and the German legal system, I can say that from a policy perspective, this was definitely the wrong way to go. Ruling that the fundamental rights of children outweigh those of their parents was misguided, if not completely nonsensical. Children have fewer rights, privileges, and responsibilities than adults, which means that the rights they do enjoy are subject to increased and more stringent limitations. Children can be required to go to school, to be vaccinated. They can be subject to government and parental imposed curfews, denied driving privileges, and prevented from purchasing whiskey. For a government to impose these kinds of restrictions on adults, though, would be a violation of their rights, potentially. And this makes sense. While I'm obviously unsure of the specifics on how this works in Germany, in most Western countries, generally children belong to their parents or they belong to the state. They are recognized as being less capable of taking care of themselves than adults, and as they have fewer responsibilities, they also enjoy fewer rights and freedoms. Now, those laws are there to protect uh, society and to protect children. Yes, you're right that children are less mentally developed, and for that reason um, they aren't given the same freedoms because they don't have the capacity to understand the con consequences of their actions necessarily. So those, those laws are there to protect children and protect society. Now, children don't belong to their parents. They're not an item like uh, this lighter, which I can choose to just smash the crap out of if I wanted, um, because I just felt like it. There's laws there which are there to protect children from potential harm from uh, parents. You know, a parent can't send their child to work down in a coal mine. They can't beat their child until they're covered with blood, or chop their leg off or drive uh, a red-hot poker um, into them or anything or anything like that. Uh, you know, a parent has a responsibility to take care of a child, and they're granted a fair bit of freedom in how they do that. But something which is... Uh, but there's limitations based on harm which are, uh, which are imposed. And, you know, regardless of someone's religious inclinations, um, that that should not even come into it. If a child beats, if a parent beats their child until they're covered in blood, it doesn't matter whether or not the child's trying to drive the demons out of them, or whether or not they're just a cunt. Uh, their consequence, um, the legal consequence of it, should be exactly the same. And genital mutilation of a baby, uh, quite frankly, is um, should be completely illegal. That the court created a hierarchy of human rights, prioritizing the rights of children over their parents, is particularly dangerous given the court's other conclusion. And that other conclusion is that if circumcision is undergone for health reasons, it is acceptable, but not if it's undergone for religious reasons. This might seem innocuous, but it's actually the most deeply offensive aspect of this ruling. 
The World Health Organization estimates that one in three males globally under the age of 15 is circumcised, and that thousands of parents have their sons circumcised every year for reasons of health and hygiene. The procedure is recognized as being safe and even beneficial for the future health of the child. See, what the German court is really saying is that circumcision only causes grievous bodily harm when it is performed as part of a religious ceremony. This punishes not the act itself, but the belief behind the act, and it uses the language of human rights to justify its thought policing. Now, the doctor at the center of this case had performed a circumcision on a four-year-old Muslim boy at the request of his parents for religious reasons, after, he began after which he began bleeding heavily. Although two lower courts acquitted the doctor of the charge of causing grievous bodily harm, the higher court ruled against the parents' right to have their son circumcised in the first place. I wonder what the court would have said had the parents wanted to have their son circumcised in order to, say, reduce his risk of contracting HIV in the future. Now, I don't know where you're getting the magical idea that the courts would have treated it completely differently if it was done to prevent HIV in the future. It seems to me like you're just completely pulling that out of your ass. But perhaps you've seen some information that I haven't. But you haven't left any links down in the description box. And the information I've seen on this topic so far seems to be pretty vague because it's... Um, you know, it's quite new news. Maybe there'll be some more detailed information available in the next couple of days. Uh, as far as I can, as far as I see it, if it's done to prevent future harm, then yes, it should be treated exactly the same way as it should be if it's for religious reasons. When people talk about doing it for health reasons, um, for health reasons. Uh, generally, they're talking about you know they've already got a severe infection and it needs to, and it needs to be removed because there's no other because the alternative would end up being worse than the circumcision itself. Now, yeah, I'm sure there are people who do it to reduce the chance of HIV in the future, and but that's in places where it's legal to do so for religious reasons. I mean, you know, have you not thought of this for more than a couple of minutes? Uh, in, if they did make it so that you could use so that circumcision was legal for that reason, don't you think that Muslim parents and Jewish parents and other religious parents who want their child, child circumcised, don't you think they're just going to go to their doctor and tell them it's for health reasons? Um... I mean, it boggles my mind that you hadn't thought of that, or you think that somehow religious parents aren't going to lie in order to uh, get it in, in order to uh, get it done by saying it's for uh, health reasons. Uh, let's, let's put it this way: I mean, since people seem to react uh, so illogically when it comes to uh, to circumcision, due to it being so normalised in our society, let's give a little analogy. Now, a parent goes into hospital with uh, their baby who's got a cancerous lump inside their eyeball, and removing the eye is the only way to stop the, uh, um, to stop the cancer spreading. Uh, it's perfectly reasonable um, for the doctor to remove the baby's eye in that circumstance. If they were doing it because a book told them to, then yeah, that should be illegal, um, if they were doing it to prevent possible future cancer, then yeah, that should also be illegal, and it should be treated in exactly the same way under the law. Of course, though, if they wanted to get a circumcision when they became an adult, or they wanted to have their eye removed, whether it's because a book told them to, or whether it's to reduce the possibility of diseases in the future, or whether they just think it looks nice, they should be allowed to do so, regardless of how stupid um, I personally think it might be, because they're an adult and they should be allowed to make their own decisions. It would have been the same procedure, with possibly the same result, but I doubt the ruling would have been the same. This could have, and should have, been the German equivalent of a medical malpractice suit. If the doctor did his job in a way that caused grievous medical harm, grievous bodily harm, through excessive bleeding, then perhaps his credentials should be examined. But neither the doctor nor the parents should be penalized for the mere fact that the boy was circumcised. 
If the parents had justified the circumcision on the basis of health or hygiene, the court, the case likely would not have even gone to trial. Now, to some degree, I do kind of agree with you. In an area where circum circumcision is legal, the doctor shouldn't be sued for performing the procedure. Then the legal system itself is what should be challenged. But you know, I really do think that you're just pulling it out of your ass when you think that uh, the courts would have treated it differently if it was uh, for non-religious reasons. Uh, you do make it quite clear later in your video that you think that the Germans are anti-Semitic and Islamophobic, which is pretty hypocritical, really. But the fact that it did means that the issue is not with the procedure itself, but with the reasons for undergoing it, and that the court would turn on its head a long-standing and well-understood legal distinction between the rights of adults and the rights of children speaks to the astonishing degree to which the court did, in fact, aim to restrict religious liberty. Clearly, then, you don't get the uh, concept that my rights end where your rights begin. My right to punch ends where your face is. Um, you know, it's, it's not an attack on religious liberty. People are still perfectly entitled to believe whatever they want to believe, no matter how ridiculous other people may think it is. People can still dress however they want and sit down, pray, or do any of that stuff they want to do, but if it harms another person in the process, then they shouldn't be allowed to do it. Um, and yeah, um, things like that have been challenged quite a lot when it comes to children over the years. We're no longer allowed to send children down coal mines. Um, there's tighter restrictions on how much a parent can beat their child in, uh, in most countries. And, you know, parents are going to be more likely to be prosecuted for harming their child. It's not a religious attack. It's because circumcision harms the child. And I just want to add that I've been reading news articles where in the comment section people ask questions about female circumcision and try to draw comparisons. There is absolutely no parallel between circumcision and clitorectomy. Female genital mutilation, FGM, is not circumcision, and not because it happens to females. FGM not only has no benefits, but it also poses severe risks to the health and safety of women and young girls all over the developing world. That could be the topic of a future rant, but I just want to add quickly that the rationale for eradicating FGM is to protect young girls and women from a dangerous and sometimes deadly procedure. Now, if you think that there's no comparison to be drawn, you are either lying or you've done zero research on the topic. Um, there's this common misconception in the Western world that um, female circumcision is the complete removal of the clitoral herd, the mate labia minora and the labia majora. That is one form of uh, female circumcision, the most severe form, and of course that is a lot more harmful than the male equivalent, but there's also for, um, there's also forms which are a lot less severe, such as uh, pricking the clitoris with a pin, um, and there's also versions which are um, pretty much um, the same. There's the removal of the clitoral hood, which is pretty much a perfect analogue to the male version, but of course that removes far less tissue. Rightfully so, all the female forms of circumcision are illegal in uh, all of the Western world as far as I'm aware. And, you know, I'd just like to see the same thing applied to uh, baby boys. Now, male circumcision can cause a lot of harm. There is a case where a baby screamed themselves to death and their lung collapsed while they were having, um, while they had a circumcision performed on them. Uh, there was a boy who had their penis burnt off during a circumcision. Uh, there's all sorts of risks of complications. Um, you mentioned one in your video. Uh, there's infections which can take place. I'll leave a few links to um, information about that kind of stuff below. And also I'm going to link to a video of a circumcision um, being performed and I when I tried to watch it I couldn't make it through the whole video the baby was clearly in that much pain it was it was hard for me to watch 
and I couldn't even imagine what that baby was going through. The fact that it's performed as part of a rite of passage is not the reason for trying to eliminate the procedure. Indeed, the cultural and religious aspects of the practice cause a lot of human rights activists to be extra sensitive when working on this issue. And people aren't trying to uh, get circumcision banned because they don't like the Jewish rites of passage. That is complete nonsense. They're doing it because it causes harm to children, just as female circumcision causes harm to children. In the Western world, there's quite a bit of propaganda about the health benefits of circumcision. But believe it or not, people make the same arguments, exactly the same arguments, for female circumcision in some places. I'll leave a link to a video down below which advocates female circumcision. And yeah, it's complete bullshit, just like all of the health benefit and um, health benefit arguments for male circumcision. And I'll leave a few links below to uh, debunk uh, some of the myth, um, some of those myths as well. Um, but yeah, it has been done for exactly the same reasons. The reasoning of the German court, however, was not rooted in protecting the right to health of the individual through the regulation of a medical procedure, equally on religious or non-religious grounds. Instead, the procedure is only illegal if the parents request it for religious reasons. The objective safety of circumcision wasn't really at issue. The beliefs of the parents were what the court examined and decided to regulate, and that is not okay. And furthermore, Judge Holm Putsky, please excuse my terrible pronunciation, said that unlike many politicians, the court has not allowed itself to be scared off by charges of anti-Semitism or religious intolerance. Now, I don't know about you, but scared off sounds kind of reactionary to me and indicates that anti-Semitism and or religious intolerance were at a minimum underlying themes and at a maximum fundamental issues in this case. Now again, I think you're just clutching at straws here, I really do. Uh, would you be making that same argument if somebody who stood up against female circumcision was saying that they're not going to be scared off by, um, uh, by Muslims? Would you be calling them and um, them Islamophobic for making that argument? Somehow, I seriously doubt it. I just don't really get why the German court felt the need or thought it was a good idea to stick its collective middle finger at Germany's Jewish and Muslim populations. I mean, does Germany really want to be arbitrarily restricting the non-harmful practices of its religious minorities? As I've discussed, it's not a non-harmful practice. There's all sorts of harm which can be caused by it, and it's not arbitrary either. Yeah, it is being done for human rights issues, you know, the rights of a child to not be genitally mutilated for stupid, arbitrary reasons. Um, and, you know, it's just saying that, well, they're just sticking their finger up at, reli um, at religion. Yeah, your rights to religion end where other people's rights um, begin. The Bible says that you should, um, you should stone homosexuals in places. You're not allowed to do that because that would harm homosexuals. You can believe it as much as you want, you're just not allowed to act on it. Given its history, I'm sure that'll go over just great. Okay. Okay, so you're obviously referring to the atrocity which was the Second World War and the anti-Semitism by a lot of the German people during that time period. That was a long time ago. I don't know if you're aware of that. And you can't just imply that the Germans are, anti um, are being anti-Semitic uh, for wanting to pass this law. I mean, that would be like me calling you a racist because you told a black person not to kill someone and you're a white person and white people owned black slaves at one point in history. It's completely ridiculous. 